reflecting upon on Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran. Uh, we've been specifically looking at ayah number 10 in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ That when describing upon the qualities of the, now we talked about this, the three groups that Allah Ta'ala right at the beginning of Al-Baqarah describes, the believers, the disbelievers, and the hypocrites. So we're talking about specifically what Allah Ta'ala says here in ayah number 10 about the qualities of the disbelievers that in their hearts is a disease and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases this disease and وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ and for them, for these hypocrites, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared a painful, never decreasing, wrenching type of punishment بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ because they are liars and we've been reflecting upon and looking at what are then the qualities that would uh, make someone to fall into this realm, into this category of a, of a human being, of a hypocrite. And it's important for us to know this, obviously, because we as believers stand for the opposite of that. The antithesis of that is what a believer stands for. So sometimes, subhanAllah, we might end up falling into these qualities of the hypocrites. So it, just like a disease that's described here, just like you want to know about uh, diseases and, and, and ways for you to stay away from it, the signs and the symptoms of it. So similarly here, the scholars mentioned to us, we must become familiar with what is the signs of a, hypoc a hypocrite and how to stay away from them, inshallah. So we've been talking about uh, specifically uh, some of the signs that we talked about the past few times where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, that the foundation, right here it's given in this ayah, that the foundation of hypocrisy is liars. And that these people of, uh, who are considered to be hypocrites are profound liars. They lie all the time, subhanAllah. And the second thing that we talked about uh, with regards to the signs of hypocrisy is promise breakers. Uh, people who break their promise on a routine basis then know that a branch of hypocrisy would be applicable to them if, if, if we find or others, we find others falling into this realm of breaking promises all the time. The third thing we talked about was the breaking of trust. That whenever they're entrusted with some, something or someone, that these people, they break that amana, that trust that has been given to them. And we started talking about this last time. The fourth sign that the, the scholars mentioned to us uh, is given in ayah uh, number 142 in Surah Al-Nisa, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهُ وَهُوَ خَادِعُهُمْ وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا يُرَاءُونَ النَّاسَ وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Which translates to mean that indeed the hypocrites, the, the two-faced people, they try to deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that deceives them. And when they stand in the salah, when they stand in the prayer, they stand with laziness, with feebleness. And uh, they also show off to the people and they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except qalil, except just a little. So here we're getting the next qualities of what the hypocrites do. The first thing that's mentioned here is that people who fall into the, into the realm of hypocrisy or one of the branches that, that falls upon them is that when they stand in the salah, they stand in laziness. So what I want to remind myself and you brothers and sisters in Islam about, and we all have to work on this subhanAllah, is that if we find ourselves when we are attending the salah with laziness, ah oh, man, Dhuhr came again, Asr came again, oh you know, if we're just taking our sweet little time we're delaying it, we really don't, you know, are not like preparing for it, subhanAllah, then subhanAllah, look at this ayah that this could apply then to us, that, that this is one of the diseases of the hypocrites, that they are lazy in the salah. They are lazy towards remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I, I don't know if you've ever come across someone, you know, you're, you're in a halaqah 
or you want to sit down, you want to recite Quran, you want to, you know, we get into these little gatherings, these, these cliques, we have these get-togethers and what have you. People talk for hours on just, subhanAllah, useless things. So sometimes a brother might say, you know what, let's, let's open the Quran and let's, let's go through this ayah or that ayah. And if you see someone or you find in yourself that, oh, you know, brother, that's for the masjid or something. If we act like this, then know that this is a sign of hypocrisy, subhanAllah, that's, that that's, uh, kind of could be ap applicable upon us. So in general, they, these people uh, are lazy with regards to the good gatherings, the halaqa, reading Quran, learning about Islam. They're lazy with regards going to going to the masjid. They are late in coming to Salat al Jum'ah or they don't even show up at all. So in general, uh, Islam is just a routine. It's just a routine thing. There's no, there's no passion. There's no attitude. There's no like Subhanallah uh, push and drive with regards to achieving the Deen, and, and especially Salah. Specifically, is what we're talking about here. So uh, we checked. Uh, we we kind of talked about this last time a little, where we saw the opposite of this. How did Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? How did the Sahaba? How do the scholars react opposite of this quality of the hypocrites? And we looked at one saying of Hazrat uh, Aisha Raitaranha, in which she was asked the question uh, that when did Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? How did he or when did he wake up for the Salat al Tahajjud? Now, Tahajjud for us is obviously a Sunnah. You know, it's not a Fard. For Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would wake up regularly and he would always be doing this. So look at now, and I'm not talking about Duhr, I'm not talking about us, we're, we're already awake. We're talking about in the middle of the night and we're tired and what have you. But Aisha Raitaranha replied back that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as soon as he heard the crowing of the rooster, he would jump out of bed, subhanAllah. So this is the, 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 the soundness or the fitness, the liveliness, the fierceness of iman, the fierceness of faith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had with regards to worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another example, Imam Ahmad reports in his Kitab al-Zuhud uh, in the biography of Adi uh, bin Hatim that he said, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, did the prayer, did the time of prayer come close? Except that I was had an ardent desire to go and 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 perform it. So he said, like I swear by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, every time the time of the prayer came, I I had nothing but like an ardent desire, an ard, ardent push to go and perform it. Subhanallah. And uh, I'm not sure if we talked about this here, uh, but I, you know, one example that I, I came across in my life, Subhanallah, of a person like this. Uh, there was a young man in, in Nebraska when I, where I used to live. And this uh, young man, 16, 17 years old, you know, white American, in the middle of, of uh, the quote-unquote Bible, Bible Belt. He took, he took his shahada. And subhanAllah, when this young man, when he came to realize about salah, that's, you know, aqim is salah, establish the salah, make the salah like as if you eat or drink. SubhanAllah, at that time we didn't have the iPhones or Androids and what have you that, you know, it was so convenient to have. We just had the papers, right? This is about 15 years ago. This young man, subhanAllah, he printed the Salah. And every time I was with him, he was looking at that. You know, it's 12.17. Okay, brother, yeah, I know. Yeah, 12.34 is, is Salat al Dhuhr time. Okay, just a clock ahead. I mean, he'd be looking at it like that, subhanAllah. He was, I mean, this, what Imam Ahmed would be saying, I saw that in this young man, subhanAllah. And, and he, he was going through such a condition when, when I visited him in his house in Iowa, subhanAllah. Uh, his mom obviously didn't, didn't convert to Islam. His mom was a divorced lady. And uh, the mom's boyfriend was living there in the house. His younger brother, who wasn't obviously convinced about Islam, would bring his girlfriend over. They had a dog in the house. Uh, he would be telling his mom with regards to not cooking pork. And he had, he was trying to keep, you know, his area in his room clean for the salah because obviously the issue with regards to the dog licking and what have you. So look at all the struggles and striving that, that he, he had, subhanAllah. The situation that, that he had, subhanAllah. But yet he didn't, he didn't stumble with regards to being adamant with regards to his salah, subhanAllah. And look at the condition, look at the easiness that we have. You know, we don't have anything even close to that, you know. But this young man, subhanAllah, in the middle, of, like I said, in the middle of the Bible belt, 
with a divorced Christian mom, who knows what condition of his, his um, the boyfriend was, the, his brother purposely bringing girls over and what have you, doing all kinds of things just to bother him. And yet, subhanAllah, he's carrying this, the salah schedule with him, looking at when is the next salah, subhanAllah. So we see these, 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 this kind of conviction in people, subhanAllah. Even now, we don't need to look at Imam Ahmad. We just need to, subhanAllah, realize that this is the antithesis of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about, the opposite of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about with regards to the hypocrites. So the hypocrites, they approach the salah with laziness, with feebleness. Ah, oh, I've got time. Oh, I've got 20 minutes. i got 30 minutes. That's okay. No need to rush. Don't be so extreme, brother. <laughs> SubhanAllah, I'm sure you've heard of this. Um, other examples. Uh, SubhanAllah. One Imam, uh, uh, his name is Saeed bin Al Musayb. Uh, Musayb uh, reports in his biography, and he said, Never did the Mu'adhan announce the call of Salah for 40 years while I was in the Masjid of Rasulullah, except that I would attend it. For 40 years, he said, I never would I hear the, mu the Mu'adhan call the, for the Salah in the Masjid of Rasulullah, except that I was there. SubhanAllah. And we all know about Rasulullah's statement with regards to when we attend the, the, the Salah. He said, if you knew the benefits of giving the Adhan and standing in the first stuff, in this first line, you would actually be in fight, fighting for it, you know. <laughs> and SubhanAllah, where do we find that? I mean, I, I saw one example of that in, in one of the masajid, the local masajid here in Ramadan, mashallah. There are some regular brothers that are always attending. And they actually, and at the end of Ramadan, they ended up apologizing with each other because they were so pushy with each other to try to get that first line to stand in the first stuff, subhanAllah. So you see that, subhanAllah, but, you know, we have all these opportunities. And Rasulullah is telling us the importance of giving the adhan and, and coming in the first line that you would even fight physically with each other to, to come in and take that position, subhanAllah. And also remember, you know, Rasulullah telling us that in Jannah, inshallah, Every week there's a gathering similar to this Jum'ah, uh, like this Jum'ah, you know, this gathering. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there. And our position to the c closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like the position of being here with regards to the Jum'ah subhanAllah. So look at the, how this should give us motivation. And we should be so ardent and we should be so fierce and so subhanAllah lively with regards to attending the, the masajid, attending the, the salah, attending the Jum'ah. So that's with regards to uh, the laziness and feebleness uh, with regards to prayer and with regards to uh, worship in general that, that the, that the munafiqeen, they do the opposite of that. They're lazy in it. The second thing that we got from this ayah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned uh, here in this ayah that إِلَّا uh, salati qamu kusala That they would stand up with laziness and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يُرَا, uh, يُرَا اللَّهَ That they would stand to be showing off to the people and they would remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except a little qalila. So again, I ask myself and you brothers and sisters in, in Islam this question that when we're standing in the salah, when we're standing in worship, who are we standing for? And are we following in, falling into this uh, last part of this ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about these hypocrites when they stand, they stand up for showing off and they also stand, uh, when, they, when they're stand, when they standing, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except a little. So this is where the importance of uh, khushu comes in the salah. That when we're standing in the salah, may Allah give myself a new tawfiq inshallah to remember, now I'm in a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I must subhanAllah, you know, some of the scholars come in when you say Allahu Akbar, it's like you're throwing the world behind you and now it's just you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is in front of you. You know, how many times do we do we go through, measure this, I mean I say this to myself also, measure from the beginning of salah to the end of salah, how many times do you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or are we in this struggle uh, of, of trying to stay focused in the salah and the world, worldly matters and the worldly affairs come to our mind, you know? Everything with regards to our work, everything with regards to what I got to do today, what I got to do tomorrow, I'm hungry, I'm this, I'm that, subhanAllah. And then in the end, sometimes all we do is assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, and that's all we get from the salah. So just the takbiratullah ihram, Allahu Akbar, 
in between we don't remember anything and then assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi we sometimes we forget subhanallah what we even recited in the salah what did we recite in the first surah uh, after al fatiha what did we recite in the second so this is the other uh, uh, aspect of hypocrisy that rasulullah uh, that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about here and look at these scary hadith with regards to to this 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 aspect of showing off for name for for fame for game for reputation if we do deeds for for the people rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us in in bukhari and muslim that the one who who lets the people hear of the of, of his good deeds intentionally in order to win their praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let the people know of his real intention on the day of judgment and he who does uh, good in public to show off and when the praise of the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will disclose his real intention and, and humiliate him on the day of judgment subhanallah so what a, what a stern warning that if we're doing our deeds for 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 name for game for reputation or what have you everything is going to be revealed on the day of judgment and we'll be humiliated there in front of the people just like subhanallah we try to show off for them in this world and the, in the hereafter will be humiliated in front of them, in front of them subhanallah so um, another uh, rawaya ibn majah reports from abu hirar that rasulullah sallallahu said people will come to the day of judgment with good deeds like mountains and uh, and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make their deeds scattered like the dust so these people are coming with all of these deeds they're as big as the mountains and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to turn their deeds into dust. And then the companions asked, Ya Rasulullah, weren't these people Muslims? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa replied back and said, Of course, they used to pray, they used to fast, they used to spend in charity from their excess wealth, and they used to spend a portion of the night even in tahajjud, subhanAllah. However, when they were alone, they would violate the sanctuary of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, this is talking about if, if we're in front of the people in one way, we're doing our salah, we're, we're doing the fasting, or we're giving the zakah, we have good manners, we have good eti etiquettes, we have you know all these things that the people see us in this particular light. But if we're alone, then the opposite happens. So Rasulullah is t telling us that all those deeds on the day of judgment, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us from this case, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be scattered like dust, subhanAllah. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually also warns us uh, of this in an authentic hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I am free from any partners and from any association with me. Whoever associates partners with me and in any action, I will abandon him and his association to me. And also with regards to uh, what all of this is, this showing off, this is actually called the scholar's uh, categorize this and say that this is ar -riya. this is the minor shirk this is the the showing off this is you know shirk there's the, the, the kabir shirk but this is the minor shirk when we taint when we bring our intentions uh, and tainted with regards to showing off also for the people this is ca considered minor shirk and it's very very dangerous and it's very very subhanallah hard to detect so we have to be very cognizant and aware of this Rasulullah even told us of the nature of this in one rawaya Rasulullah said, I fear for my ummah a hidden shirk. Uh, that shirk is ar riya the pride hypocrisy. Beware of the shirk, this hidden shirk, as it's like a black ant walking on a black rock in a moonless night. So imagine a black ant on a black rock on a moonless night coming in, sneaking upon us. Who's going to be able to see that? Rasulullah is telling us this ar riya will approach us like this. We start out an intention for fi sabilillah, and then something comes, the shaitan comes and does was was was, and we start tainting it for, for, this, uh, for the people or, or for some other reasons except for the sake and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us the opposite of this in the Quran. Uh, in um, in uh, Surah Al-Mulk. Inshallah, I'll get to that in the second part of the, of the khutbah. I, we will talk about the antithesis of this. What is the opposite or what is the, the, the cures then, inshallah, with regards to 
uh, this this uh, this minor showing off or showing off for the people. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al-Zim wa nafa'ana wa yakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim innahu ta'ala jawad al-Karim malakum barrawf al-Rahim Let us ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Astaghfirullah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد في الأولين اللهم صل على محمد في الآخرين اللهم بارك على محمد في الأولين اللهم بارك على محمد في الآخرين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله عما بعد تبرسيد so brothers and sisters in Islam we've been talking about two of the qualities of the منافقين namely the quality of the munafiqeen approaching the salah specifically and indeed all of Islam and all of worship with laziness. And the second thing we talked about, uh, the other quality is that uh, the people of the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, they do their deeds for showing off to others. And so I wanted to inshallah conclude with a few uh, points from what the scholars mentioned to us that are the antithesis or the opposite of uh, inshallah pushing this arriya and they're showing off from the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mulk, ayah number 12, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ That verily, for those who fear their Lord, the unseen, بِالْغَيْبِ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ For them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them forgiveness, and a great reward. So the scholars tell us that true Iman, true faith, true belief shows up when we are in front of the people and also when we are alone, subhanAllah. When it's midnight, when we're in our rooms, when the door is closed, when the curtains are drawn, no one and nothing can see us at that time except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is al hasib who can always, who is always aware. So at this time, these people, the true believers, they are fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they don't violate the sanctity, they don't go outside the hudud, they don't go, go outside the boundary that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has put, both in front of the people and in private. So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the result of these people who remember their Lord, these people that, that, that uh, fear their Lord, the unseen, and, and unseenness. So there's two understanding of this ayah. One is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unseen. The other understanding the scholars tell us is that they themselves are unseen in front of the people and they still fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised forgiveness and a great reward. So we must realize that subhanAllah, it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is worthy of worship because it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can reward us. And it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has the ultimate uh, reigns of everything with regards to uh, the universe. Not a grain that in the depths of the, uh, of the, of, of the, of the ground or uh, a molecule of water does anything without uh, the, the help, without the, the knowledge, without the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, this tawheed al rububiyyah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate Lord and master of everything. So, so why go after the show of people or anything uh, less than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, yeah, that can fully reward us and we should inshallah internalize this, this understanding and remember this in order to inshallah be, it be a tool to keep us away from our riya. I'll finish with one story of this. Um, one, uh, and when I was back in Kansas City, there was a group, mashallah, a tablighi jama'at group that came uh, and visited the, the masjid there. And subhanAllah, this is a real-life incident of a brother who, who realized this, that everything, all control, everything is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the brother mentioned, they, you know, back in uh, St. Louis, uh, again, the Bible Belt, some people, you know, redneck country, what have you, some people are, are really ignorant with regards to what Islam is and uh, what the Quran is and what have you. So this brother walks into this gas station 
and he's wearing a thobe like this, and he's wearing a kufi. And he said, a, a non-Muslim came in front of him and said, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> SubhanAllah. And this brother, SubhanAllah, his response was what? He said, if I knew that you could kill me, I would worship you. He said, if I, if I knew that you could kill me, I would worship you. And the brother, he, he, when he was telling me this, this story, he was saying that in his heart, this brother was saying, Hasbi Allah wa ni'ma al -wakil. Allah is sufficient for me, and he is my protector. The dua of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he was being cast, subhanAllah, into the fire, he was re reciting this, this dua, that uh, sufficient is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he is my pr protector. So he responded back to this man, that if, I, you, if you think you can kill me, I would be worshipping you. Like every realizing, internalizing this 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 fact that it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that has the ultimate control of everything. So we don't need to be fearing anyone or anything except our creator and our maker. And subhanAllah, this brother he mentioned that this man, after he said this and he was reciting this Hasbi Allah wa Ni'mal Wakil with full iman like this, this man just fell down on the ground and he was in convulsion, subhanAllah. And the people were like, Hey, look, he didn't even touch him and he's already on the ground, subhanAllah. So, again, I, I remind myself uh, and you brothers and sisters in Islam that one of the qualities of the hypocrites is that they do things for the show, for the gain, for the name, for the fame, for the reputation in front of the people. We must realize that everything is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the only one worthy of worship. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can reward us. I end, inshallah, with one dua, one beautiful dua from our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa that uh, gave us uh, this realization of seeking forgiveness uh, and seeking protection from this shirk, from this arriya. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in one uh, in one dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give my, me tawfiq in you, inshallah, to memorize this and, and apply this always in our lives. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma alim al-ghaybi wa shahadati fatri al-samawati wal-ard rabba kulla shayin wa malika ashhadu anna la ilaha illa ant أعوذ بك من شر نفسي ومن شر شيطاني وشركه وأن أقترف على نفسي سوءا أو أجر أو أجره إلى مسلم. So Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying in this dua, O oh Allah, you are the knower of the unseen and the seen, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and you are the master and the Lord and the sovereign of all the things that exist. And I bear witness that nothing has the right to be worshipped except you. And I take refuge in you from the evil of my soul, from the evil of, uh, of the shirk of the shaitan, and from committing wrong against my, myself and bringing such wrong upon other Muslims. So inshallah, I end with that. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me tawfiq and you tawfiq inshallah to stay away from all the qualities of the hypocrites, all the, the qualities of the munafiqeen. Let's make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi l-akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab al-nar. Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina wa akhta'ana. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamaltahu wa lalladheena min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bihi wa'afu anna. Waghfir lana warhamna anta maulana fansurna lal qawmil kafirin. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our salah. Ya Allah accept all of our deeds. Ya Allah protect us from all of the ills of hypocrisy. Ya Allah. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Ya Allah we seek your protection from the punishment of the grave. And we seek your protection from the punishment on the day of judgment. And we seek your protection from the hellfire. Ya Allah. Ya Allah give us al jannat al firdaus Ya Allah. Ya Allah give us jannat al firdaus Ya Allah. Ya Allah give us jannat al firdaus Ya Allah. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we make dua, we raise our hands up and we invoke you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to alleviate the hardship and the pain, the suffering, the rancor, the oppression, the violence, the bloodshed that our brothers and sisters are going through all over the world, Ya Allah, in Syria. Ya Allah, help them in Syria and Libya and Afghanistan and Pakistan and Kashmir and Palestine and all the Muslim lands, Ya Allah. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establish on this world a world of justice and a world of peace, Ya Allah. Ya Allah give us a world of justice and a world of peace, Ya Allah. Ya Allah give us a world of justice and a world of peace, Ya Allah. Ya Allah unite us under La ilaha illallah Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Ya Allah unite us under the Quran and unite us under the sunnah of our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our shortcomings and our sins. Rabbi muqeem as-salati wa min dhurriyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua. Ibadullah inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa ithadi al-qurba wa anhaad al-fahsha wa al-munkari wa al-baghi. Ya'idhukum la'allakum tathakkaroon wa ladhikrullahi ta'ala wa awla wa azza wa jalla wa tammu wa hammu wa akbar wa aqeem as-salah. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا لا صلاة حيا لا الفلا فدقة ما تصلى فدقة ما تصلى الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله استو استقيموا فريز لوك تو ذا باك اوف يور فيت ميك شور اتس ستريت uh, put the back of your feet on the line, inshallah. Please press to each other, leaving no gaps for, for shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me and you to pray this salah as if it's our last salah. Allahu Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين
قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله I just have a few announcements, so please uh, bear with me. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajihoon. The mother of uh, Iqbal Hussain has passed away. And also my cousin in Palestine just passed away. So please make dua for them. Uh, Subhanallah, these uh, people when they pass away, they, all their deeds stops except the dua for their children. For their children. Which brings us to uh, good news. Inshallah, the following Sunday, ICL will start the... Uh, Nur al-Quran uh, Sunday program, which will teach children Islamic Quran in Arabic. So we encourage everybody to enroll their kids. This way, when you need their dua, dua is there for you, inshallah. The uh, registration forms are on the back, so take one out, and also the flyers are out there. And it's for a very, very minimum fee, just to cover the cost of the operation and the salaries for the, book, uh, the teachers and the books. And inshallah, halata is after Aisha tonight, which is 8 o'clock. So please make plans to attend the uh, tonight halata. Jazakumullah. Okay, brother, one more time we'll uh, say something. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakumullah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. A few weeks ago, as we all know that we are collecting a fund for build our new mosque, inshallah. And we are renting this place just uh, temporary. And Alhamdulillah, one of our brother, may Allah reward him, he donated the cost of the rent, $600, for this purpose. But we still, by February, we have to come up with $200,000. We are going through many avenues in local <coughs> and out of the uh, state of Arizona. But now we need from the brothers who attend the Friday prayer to collect every Friday $1,000. That will enable us to collect $4,000 a month, which means until February about 20. That will help us a lot. So we need the pledges from the brothers here every Friday to give us amount of money. It will add up the total of $1,000. So who will start giving us every Friday amount of money in order to collect $1,000. We In this box, we collect about 200 to 300. So we are looking for another 700. Anybody willing to give, for example, $200, total of 800 a month? Or let's make it easy, 100 a week, 400 a month. Who can give us this much money for the sake of Allah? Tower the building of the mosque, not the cost of this place. Okay. Another, uh, another brother, we need $1,000 at least every week to collect it. We need $150 a week, which means $200 a month. 
who can give it to us? 50 a month, uh, a week, I'm sorry. 200 a month. We need to do, yes sir. 50 a, a week. Anybody willing to give us 50? Jazakallah from Tehrati. May Allah reward. Brothers, we need to, go, to do the, to collect this fund. The Veen Mosque is a very important for the Muslim community live in this area. The closest mosque to us, it's about 45, one hour driving. And Alhamdulillah, we are praying Al-Fajr and Al-Isha, and now we have Sunday school. Very soon, inshallah ta'ala, when we get our mosque, we'll have a full activity. We need to make it. We have 200, we have 300. We need more. Another 50. Jazakallah kul khair. May Allah reward you. 100 a month. That's, that's it. 100 a month. Jazakallah. How much? Jazakallah khair. 100 a month. That's good. Uh, the 25, it will be. It will add up. 100 a month. Who can give us 100 a month? Jazakallah khair. May Allah reward you. Yes, please write your names in your way out with the brother and your phone number. Jazakallah uh, khair. Another, we need another five of 100. Just one more, two, three more to go. We need three more brothers. 100 a month. May Allah reward you, sister. Another two, one, the last one. Jazakallah khair. May Allah reward you. Please write your name and your phone number to follow up with you, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah kul khair. This is your Islamic center. Barakallah khair.
Five, six, 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 five, six